Hey everyone, welcome to a pre-stream primer, this time for Gloomhaven. We've been playing this a lot on Friday nights, Jacob's in the kitchen, William's on the couch, and that means I'm here to teach you actually what are the rules of this game. Uh, how does it work? Because we've given you broad strokes, but haven't really gone into the details. So, I've got this set up right here. This is a sample encounter. You can see my character over here on the left, and a single living bones on the right. So I'm going to play through a couple of turns and walk you through exactly what the action selection looks like, how damage is assigned, initiative, all of those things. So you can see I'm currently in an empty room with just a guy, just a single skeleton. Not super scary. He does have five health. You can see we've got the little health tokens over here in the six slots because this is the number six living bones and one shield, which means I am going to have to inflict six damage to him in order to one-shot him. I want to do that, so I'm going to select two cards from my hand, and if William and Jacob were here at the table, they would be doing this with me simultaneously. So we're each appraising the tactical situation. We're trying to figure out, okay, what do I want to do? Where do I want to go? What do I think the other guys are going to do? Because we don't have total communication. We're not allowed to say the names of our cards, we're not allowed to say any of the numbers that appear on our cards, which means we're not allowed to say uh, damage values, we're not allowed to say initiative values, anything like that. We've sort of worked out a system where we can say, okay, I'm going to go early in the turn, or I'm going to go late in the turn, and that indicates to other people, okay, cool, I'm going to get in before him so that I can do some of the stuff with that positioning. So, in this scenario, I want to take this guy out really fast, so I would say, I'm going to go really, really early. I'm going to take my two cards, I'm going to lay them face down on the table, and once everybody's done doing that, we all turn our cards face up. We turn our cards face up, whichever card is on top, in this case you can see here I selected Backstab. Backstab has an initiative of six, so if anybody's going faster than a six, well, I'll, I'll be very surprised to be honest with you, but if anybody goes faster than the six, then they would beat me, and then we also determine when the Living Bones goes. So every NPC, every enemy, has a deck that's attached to it, and that deck tells you what the enemies are going to do on any given turn. So we flip over the top one of these, we see that they act at initiative 25, they move using their listed movement value plus one, and they attack using their listed attack value minus one. However, I move at six, so there's a decent chance that I'm just going to zero this guy out before he even gets to go. So, I'm going to bring Backstab up again really quick. So you can see that on any given card, there we go, I know how uh, directions work. On any given card, there's the initiative value right in the center, but there's also two halves. The top half is generally used for attacks or effects. So heals a lot of times go here. Uh, Jacob has some abilities, or well, had, he's not playing that character anymore. Uh, some abilities that summoned uh, helpers. Those are typically top abilities. And then bottom abilities, ah, there we go, ah, you can see are typically movement abilities. So in this case, I could use this card to either attack three with a whole bunch of extra stuff or to move six. You play two cards each round. One card will be used for its top ability. One card will be used for its bottom ability. So in this case, I'm deciding to use the bottom ability of Special Mixture. So move three spaces and poison one adjacent enemy after I finish my movement. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and I'm going to apply poison to this skeleton. So poison is a status effect, which means I take one of these condition tokens, and I'm going to put it on the space where that skeleton's health is. Status tokens do different things. As you can imagine, poison uh, is bad. <laughs> So in this particular game, poison means that any time this enemy takes damage from an attack, that damage is increased by one. Which is really good for me, because now I'm going to backstab it. So, pull backstab up one more time. You can see that the base attack value here is three. That's the three next to the sword. You can also see that I get plus two attack and one, if I can hold it steady, one uh, little starburst there. That means experience if the target is adjacent to any of my allies, and two attack and one experience when the target is adjacent to none of its allies. Well, it's not adjacent to any of my allies, but it isn't adjacent to any of its allies either, which means my current attack value is three plus two, so I'm dealing 
five damage right now. You add in the one from poison, so I'm currently looking to deal six damage. I'm going to take my uh, damage deck. Uh, this is basically what this system uses instead of a die roll. So by default, you have 20 cards in your deck. One of them is a crit, one of them is a miss, and the rest of them are fluctuating between minus two and plus two. So it's basically just a way to introduce a little bit of uh, uncertainty into the deck. But I'm going to come over here, I'm going to take this, I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to see plus one damage. So now my total damage value for this attack is five, plus one from poison, plus one from my card, seven damage, he has five health and one shield, I get through all of that, and he dies. So, cue victory music. Uh, typically we go Final Fantasy. I'm actually not sure if we have the copyright to that, so we probably shouldn't, but what are you going to do? Poison also falls off because you can't poison a corpse. And this guy comes off the map. He's replaced with a coin. At any point in the future, anyone who ends their turn on that coin can pick it up. There are also cards that say loot. Loot is a keyword that basically allows you to pick up all of the coins and treasure chests within the stated range. That's it. That's that entire round. Uh, normally, the Living Bones would have had a chance to go. He would have made a movement with four spaces and an attack at range, uh, or rather at strength minus one, so an attack of zero plus whatever he flips over from the deck. But he's dead, and there are no Living Bones remaining on the field. So we move on to the next turn. My cards are removed from play, so Special Mixture doesn't have any particular symbols on it. It goes over here to my discard pile. Backstab, however, is an extremely powerful card. You can see here that it has that symbol. That means it's lost. Any card that is lost is really, really hard to recover. It's sort of like being exiled in Magic the Gathering, for those of you who are familiar with that. You can get it back, but there are very few effects that will allow you to do so, and they're definitely uh, only on a handful of like support-style characters. So, having now done that, I find myself yet again in an empty room. However, there's a door here that leads to another room. I think that room's probably got some loot, or the objective that I'm looking for, and I want to get in there. So, once again, I'm going to look through my cards. I have uh, seven cards remaining in my hand. I'm going to choose two of them. I'm going to communicate. I'm going early, though not as early as last time. And I'm going to put them face down with that one on top. That one will be my initiative. Nobody else is currently at the table, so I can just turn this face up, and we see that I'm going at initiative 11. Living Bones don't actually flip yet, because there aren't currently any Living Bones in play. If I walk through that door, and I do find that there are some Living Bones inside, we'll flip over one of their cards. But, for now, it's me. So, the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to use Smoke Bomb, to turn invisible. So when I turn invisible, invisible is a beneficial status effect. I'm going to take the invisibility token. I'm going to put it on my conditions. I have space for conditions right down here. And I'm also going to take one of my little trackers. I have uh, tokens with my symbol on them. And I'm going to put it right here. That's going to stay there until I meet the condition listed on the card, which is on your next attack while invisible, double the value of that attack. So. Uh, basically, I get behind someone, I stab them really hard, I do a lot of damage. And when I do, this comes off, I gain the listed amount of experience, and this card is lost. The other aspect of Smoke Bomb is... I can pick it up. This elemental symbol that you can see right there. So, Smoke Bomb generates dark. Uh, there are six elements in the game. Throughout the game, different effects will cause them to become strong. And then from there, they will go to waning, and then they will become inert. You have something? Nothing. Oh. Um, inert. Other effects can remove, which is cause those elements to become inert immediately in order to gain beneficial effects. I haven't played any of those this turn, because you're not actually allowed to generate and then consume the same element on your own turn. If someone else generates it, though, you're in business. So if somebody else wanted to use this dark that I've generated, we could do a really effective combo. But for now, what's important is that I'm invisible. 
and my next attack will be super strong. Now I want to go through this door, so I'm going to use the movement half of open wound, move five spaces. To open a door, I literally just step on it. So I'm going to turn this over. And normally, I would uh, look at the... But for now, I just want to move through the door. So uh, I've got a movement of five on open wound's bottom half. So I'm going to move into the door. That's all I need to do to open it. Flip it over. And this is the part where in an actual scenario, I would consult the book. So I would look at the book and it would have a layout and it would say, you put these things in this place. For the purposes of this illustration, let's say that there is a pillar here. Let's say that there's a trap here. And let's say that there's a chest here. There's also one of these guys. So we have another Living Bones, but this one, as you can see, has a yellow base. Yellow base means it's elite. Elites tend to be stronger. Some of them have access to uh, special abilities. All of those will be printed on the card here so that they can use the same behavior cards, but with different printed values. So I see he's got six health. I'm gonna take my six health tokens. This is number four, so I'm gonna put them right here. And now, because there are living bones in play, I'm going to reveal their card. They act at initiative 20. That's higher than my initiative, which means I get to finish my entire turn, and then they would go. If it was lower than mine, I would still finish my turn, but they would take their turn before anybody else got to act, even if somebody else would have normally acted right after me. Enemies will always act on the turn they're revealed. Unless, well, I mean, unless you kill them, obviously, but uh, I'm probably not going to be able to do that this time. So... I'm currently staring down this guy. I've got four points of movement left. One, two, three, four. I could get over there, but I really want to get into the very back. So, normally, I can't go over this trap without uh, hurting myself. And I can't go over this pillar at all. It's an obstacle. It would be in my way. But, I do have this item, Winged Shoes. So you've probably seen us use items on the stream. Items are... Uh, either one-time consumables in the case of something like healing potions or once per long rest items in the case of these winged shoes that I can say, all right, I'm going to turn this sideways, tap it again to use the MTG terminology, and during this movement, I am treated as jumping. Jumping is a movement type that allows you to bypass obstacles and traps without tripping them as long as you end your space in an area that is unoccupied by obstacles or uh, other pieces. You can't you can't stand on top of somebody, basically. So now, with that freedom of movement, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and be properly behind him for my next attack. That's my turn. So open wound goes to my discard pile. Smoke bomb, because it's still active, remains in play in this space up here above my card. Now, the living bones gets to activate. It activates an initiative 20. That's after me, but before all the zero other people else at the table. And it doesn't actually get to do anything because I'm invisible. Let's say, hypothetically though, that I weren't invisible. Let's say I already used the smoke bomb to attack my previous target. And I am now visible. When the enemies act, they're going to choose a focus target. The focus target is the enemy of theirs that they can reach with the littlest amount of movement possible that doesn't pass through obstacles, because they can't pass through obstacles, or traps, which they treat as obstacles for the purposes of considering movement. And this makes sense. They're not going to willingly step on a poison trap just to, you know, try to punch me in the face. But, luckily for this guy, he doesn't have to move at all in order to attack me, so I'm his focus target. Now, he's going to take one look at me, he's going to say, oh, a nice squishy target. And he's going to make an attack with strength plus zero listed strength is two, so he's currently going to deal four damage to me. I don't really have anything to do about this, so I'm just going to have to sit here and take it. Just like me, the NPCs have a deck that tells you what the modifiers to their attack are, pluses, minuses, one crit, and one critical miss, basically. So I'm hoping for none of those, but let's see what happens. Oh, it's a crit. Okay, so you can see here you've got the two X. That means he's going to deal double damage on this attack. 2 times 2 is 4, but I've got an ace in the hole. 
I've got an iron helmet, which is the third type of item. You can see there's no symbol down here at all. I don't have to consume it. I don't have to tap it. It's just always in effect, and it turns all crits into effectively plus zero cards, if that would be better for me. So in this case, two plus zero, that's just two. I'm going to come over here to my uh, handy-dandy health tracker, and I'm going to go down to two. That is almost their turn done. They would heal two if they'd taken any damage. There's no such thing as overhealing. So that's it. That's how uh, a round or two in Gloomhaven works. Enemies choose their focus based on who they can reach in the littlest amount of time. We choose our focus based on whoever we want to murder. And uh, and yeah, that's uh, your pre-stream primer for Gloomhaven. Thanks for joining, everybody, and we'll see you in about 15 minutes. Portals! Cool.